O God, our Father, we ask that you would invoke your blessing upon this service today. We ask that you would meet every need, every desire, every expectation according to your will and your purpose for our lives. Bless us and fold us in your love, grace, care, and tender mercies. It is in the name of Jesus we ask. Amen. Our announcement for this week I um, want to encourage each member uh, to take advantage of our uh, family night, our midweek service on Wednesday, um, beginning Wednesday, um, uh, January the 19th at 6.30 p.m. I'm encouraging each um, leader of our congregation to take part and share in these activities. Um, I would ask um, you if you have any problem making connections um, with the um, um, and getting into the uh, program to contact Diane Ellis, who is chairperson of our Christian Education Department, or contact uh, Latonya Peavy. These two persons can uh, help and assist you in making um, a connection. Uh, with us on Wednesday evening. Our second announcement comes from the New Covenant uh, Connection Newsletter Committee. They have asked me to read this announcement as it is printed. Um, attention New Covenant business owners and entrepreneurs. You're invited to advertise your business in the February edition of the New Covenant Connection newsletter. Just submit your business card. If you have a business but do not currently have a business card, you may submit your name, description of your business, and contact information. A newsletter member will contact you. If you were listed in the last NBC business directory, let us know if you wish to be listed this year. Business card information and, and newsletter articles should be emailed to the church office no later than Saturday, January the 29th. For our sick and shut-in, um, the list consists of Brother Dan Morris, Clarice Nation, Bobby Nelson, and Greg Tolles. So this is your prayers for Brother Albert Cooper and his family and the loss of his wife Sandra Cooper, Georgia Collins and Mother Celestine uh, McKinley, and the loss of uh, of um, of Georgia, son of, um, of um, the Collins. Rob and Denise Sherrod and the loss of Rob's aunt Irva. Reverend Grenada McDonald and the loss of her brother Luther McDonald in Mississippi. Sister Teresa Terry and the Terry family and the loss of her sister-in-law Geneva Terry. That would conclude our announcements uh, for the week. Our text for this week is part two message we did on last week. Luke the 13th chapter verses 6 through 9. He also spoke this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. Then he said to the keeper of his vineyard, Look, for three years I've come seeking fruit on this fig tree and found none. Cut it down. Why does it use up the ground? But he answered and said to him, Sir, 
let it alone this year also until I dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit, well. But if not, after that, you can cut it down. We continue with the same subject as last week, um, one more year. Jesus want to drive home the need for repentance by sharing this parable of a man seeking fruit. By now, you ought to know that this parable is more um, about man than fruit. The man repre uh, represents God. The vineyard dresser represents Christ. The vineyard represents the world. Just like the fig tree were planted in the vineyard, God causes every man and woman to be born in the world. From the Gospel of Mark, the 10th chapter and the 6th verse, but from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Psalm 103, know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. Uh, Acts 17, 28, for in him we live, move, and have our being. The fig tree purpose was to bear fruit. It had been planted to exist to bear fruit. It was by nature a fruit tree, not an oak, not a pine tree, not a cedar tree, not an elm tree. It had no other purpose for existing but to bear fruit. It is uh, so with man uh, also. In the Gospel of Matthew, the third chapter and the eighth verse, therefore bear fruit worthy of repentance. Galatians 5, 22 through 23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. John 15, 8 says, By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. He want us to be part of why we were created and why we were put on this planet Earth. John 15, 16 says, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. When the time of harvest then came, the vineyard owner came looking for fruit and found none. The fig tree had been planted in the same vineyard with other trees bearing fruit. It had the same soil, the same nourishments, the same rain, the same amount of sunshine, and the same caretaker uh, taking care of the vineyard. But the fig tree had failed its purpose. The vineyard owner 
had waited for a long time. He said uh, to um, the vineyard uh, 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 keeper, for three years I have come looking for fruit. Please keep in mind that the tree was older than three years, but for the three years he came, the tree should have been producing figs. The tree had plenty of time to bear fruit if it was going to bear fruit. So he determined his investment in the life of this tree was wasted and that the tree was wasting and taking up space, misusing space, mi taking up space. It says in the, in the Old King James reading, it says, uh, why cumbrous the ground? Why, why occupy uh, space uh, and you're not producing anything? And the fig tree was hurting the production of other fruit trees in the vineyard. And he ordered the tree to be cut down. This fig tree is one example of false believers who affect the body of Christ in the church. Persons who are privileged week after week to hear the word of God taught and preached, hear the inspiration of singing, fervent testimonies and prayers that encourages and inspire, and still there is no fruit. Matthew seven sixteen says, you will know them by their fruit. Jesus is talking about the church folk. He's talking about us. Matthew 7, 17 through 20. Even so, every tree, uh, every good tree, beareth good fruit. But a bad tree beareth bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, he repeats again, as he said in verse 17, by their fruits, you shall know them. We don't know why we have some um, who worship in the same church, who worship in singing and praying, reading other words, uh, and, and how they fail in their responsibility to be fruitful in the church. It is so designed uh, in the scripture that some people just cannot be good. They have to be um, uh, uh, producer, producers of evil fruit. In John 15, 5, Jesus says, I am the true vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, beareth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If we want to be bearers of good fruit, if we want to be producers of good fruit, if we want to be viable as God has planted us to be, then Jesus says, you must abide in me. 
And if you want to be uh, what he designed us to be and created us to be, he says, you must abide in me. He, he concludes this verse by saying, without me, you can do nothing. The tree was to be cut down. The keeper of the vineyard said to the owner, Sir, let it alone this year. Let me dig around it and fertilize it and see if it would bear fruit. If it does, well. And if it does not, I will follow your instructions. The mercy of God is God's vineyard dresser who has interceded for many of us. We could have been cut off last year, but he asked for another year. Many things we left undone that we could have been cut down. We left many things undone that we should have done. Um, um, we made some mistakes where we could have been cut off. We hurt some people that we didn't have to hurt. The Bible has said we shall reap what we sow. But mercy interceded and said, Father, give them another chance. There were pains inflicted in the lives on and in others that we didn't have to do. We, there are some who didn't attend worship service. Some didn't share in worship service. Some didn't honor God with your tithes. But mercy says, give them another chance. We all can look at our lives and take an inventory and we can see where we could have been cut off. But mercy says, let me work with them another year. I pray and hope that we will look at our lives in the light of this fig tree and decide that we don't want to be cut off. We don't want to be cut down. We want to live a life worthy of God's consideration. I don't know about you, but I thank God for, for his mercy for giving me one more year, one more year to get it right, one more year to correct my mistakes, one more year to grow closer to him, one more year to be a better husband, to be a better father, a better grandfather, one more year to be a better pastor, to be a better teacher, Went one more year to give of my best to the master. One more year to be fruitful in his service. Uh, in, 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 that, in that first number of Psalms, uh, I'm, I'm going to strive to become and be that blessed man and be that fruitful man that the psalmist speaks of. I want to, I, want, I will not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. I will not, I will not stand in the path of sinners. I, I will not sit in the seat of the scornful. But my delight and my desire will be in the word of God. And in his word I will meditate day and night. I want to be like that tree planted by the rivers of water. I will bring forth my fruit uh, on time. 
I will bring forth my fruit in its season. I want to do my, uh, my master's will. I want to bring forth even fruit in my old age. I will remain uh, uh, fresh and flourishing in the house of our God. I want to fulfill my commitment this year. I join, I, I ask you, New Covenant, to join me in fulfilling our commission responsibilities as God has called us, as he has planted us. Let us be fruitful and let us be dutiful in our responsibilities. In him come to mind, guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. I, I sometimes lose strength, but uh, hold me with your powerful hand. Sometimes becoming discouraged, the Lord lead at me and guide me. Help me to fulfill all that I have been called to do and be in this world. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Bread, bread of heaven, feed me when I get weak. Feed me when I get low in spirit. Feed me in times of needs and desire. Feed me till I want no more. Let us remain faithful, dutiful to God. You don't want to be cut off. You don't want to be destroyed. But he says, if you do not become productive, you will be cut off. Oh God, we ask this day that you will help us to be faithful, help us to be fruitful, and help us to do the things that you have commissioned us to do. Be firm in our commitment and our relationship and we pledge ourselves to do better thanking you for your mercy who has given us one more chance. Blessings on those who do not know you. Those who hear this message today that they would reconcile in their own lives and come to seek your guidance and your directions for their lives. Bless us and keep us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.